statements kuda chaala chusaru you all see life you are all grown up people 30 years 40 years of age but one idea about english language now it is changed people never feel that it is a foreign language do we yes or no we never feel that it is a foreign language if you treat english as a foreign language you will not progress the opportunities in your career will be closed if you make that statement that's why we should not get prejudiced regarding language language can be any language it can be telugu it can be hindi it can be urdu it can be sanskrit it doesn't matter it's only you know a medium of communication as long as we are comfortable we are able to communicate he has given a very huge list huh? first day has given a huge list to me <laughs> anyway uh, i thank him for listing uh, listing out all the issues and problems which are facts of our life and uh, they need to be attended to one top priority i uh, definitely i do my best to work into all those grievances which uh, professor limberly has listed out and uh, some of the department associate professors assistant professors academic consultants so in one word galaxy of telangana university faculty So it is a proud moment for me to join your ranks here as uh, one of the you know faculty members here. I feel as I am part of you. I am not different from you. It is a cherishing time for all of us. Our long dream of new state of Telangana has been realized, and at the same time, we need to mention here that all of you. whether it is a teacher professor as a student you all stood in front of the moment and probably you all led the moment of telangana i feel it's more of a socio cultural you know movement rather than a political moment we fought for our identity we fought for our culture we fought against injustice that's why we are here and this statement do we are happy it casts lot of responsibility on our shoulders let it be everybody in this hall everybody has a responsibility that we have to be the part of process of building new telangana we are calling that bangalore telangana but how you know the dream of bangalore telangana will be realized unless you i feel it's not only process of building new state of telangana we are all part of nation building ultimately we are indians basically we are all indians irrespective of our language caste creed religion you say anything we are indians and we are standing at the crossroads i feel that we should talk something about demography of this country because we are at a very very critical stage of development of our nation if you just recollect some facts about the demography demography of our own country i don't know how many of you are aware the average age of indian anybody can anybody can answer this question what is the average age of indian 64 anybody else you may good where is 28 i think indian labor organization has made an assessment in 2020 i am our is the youngest nation in the world so many articles you will see in media that india is capable of becoming super power why we talk about that issue in the last generation 
If you just look back, three decades back, China was just like India. But now, where is China? How about the universities in China? What is their PISA score? How many universities in China, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, you name any South Asian country, they are amongst one of the top, you know, uh, universities or institutions in the world. We have islands of excellence, IITs, IAMs, IAS, we claim number of institutions, we are proud of them. And thanks to them, because of them, we have a, you know, uh, proud face when we go abroad, or uh, uh, youth will see you go to any country in the world. But at the same time, how many of our institutions are in the top 200 universities or institutions of the world? No. Top 200, it is the moon. It's very surprising to know. We talk of uh, top in Institute of Sciences, IAS. Third is IIT Bombay. And fourth is IIT Rookie. These are the first four institutions we have got world ranking in the world. But they never figure in first 200. Somewhere uh, between 270 and 350, somewhere in that range, these four institutions are there. So these are the academic institutions we want in the coming years to become islands of excellence and how to get, you know, ranking, some ranking in the world. That should be the dream of every academician as part of uh, the university. We are fortunate that our university is named as Telangana University. The name of university is Telangana University. We have some emotional attachment, isn't it? And we, when we stood in the front of the moment, it seems spirit should continue that yes, the Salangana University should become one of the foremost institutions, universities in that country. That should be our dream. And I hope every one of us here, irrespective of their rank, their service, let it be outsource worker or a professor and head or dean, all are meant for that. We are all one family <coughs> working for same class. And cause is very pious. Education is very, very important in the present day society. In fact, I will say that education is game changer in the modern world. Nothing else. Nothing can change our society. Nothing can bring welfare and development to our society unless something happens in the field of education sector. So far, we are, doing, we are doing very good work in the field of education as a country as whole. Well. If you just look back, what was the literacy percentage in 1947 when British left our country? It is 16%. We are standing at 74%. How many number of students were there in 1947 who were part of higher education system? Only 4 lakhs. Now it is 2.5 crores. 2.5 crores. You do not know some of the facts. If you average out every day, and telling every day, 5,000 students are entering the higher education sector in the country. 5,000 every day. And every day, nine new institutions are getting open. There is exponential growth in higher education sector now. We are unfortunate that the higher education sector was neglected in the 1980s and 90s. Two decades we have neglected this sector. We have focused more on our energy, our valuable resources at the same time in primary education. That's why there is no problem of enrollment in primary education now, primary education sector. As on today, if you analyze the, you know, every 12-year-old child in the country who has entered into our education stream, it is 
That's where our hope lies. That's where our hope lies. Thus, SSC, we find that it is only 40 percent. Only 40 percent of students. Our enrollment percentage at primary school education stage is 116 percent. We have passed 100 percent. We claim 116 percent. But when they cross 10, it is just 40 percent. This is around 20 to 25 now. And uh, while the average must have crossed 35, in developed countries it may be 60, 70, something like that. So the gross enrollment ratio in the higher education is very, very less. It needs to be stepped up. That means people are getting dropped at the SSC stage, at the intermediate stage, when they enter higher education almost. 75 to 80 percent are dropped. And now we are dealing with only 25 percent of the people whom we could retain in our education system. We have been working as a nation on four or five aspects of higher education. One is called access. People of the country should get the proper access into higher education sector. That way we went on, you know, expanding number of colleges, number of universities. The number of universities which were 26 in 1947. Now, there were about 650 colleges in 1947. Now it has crossed 40,000. We have 40,000 colleges government, private, so many names are there. Deemed universities are there. So you name it, it is exponential increase in the number of colleges. When we made a statement that ours is the youngest nation and we are talking about demography, we have to realize that we want to encash this age if we are able to encash this age in the next three decades, then only we will become superpower in the world. Why we are saying in the world? Because one sixth of world population is India. If India gets transformed, if this group, you take age group, 10 years from now, please remember this. Those who are in the higher education sector, 10 years to 19 years. This is the age group which is affecting 21st century now. And this age group, this cohort of age is not only highest in the world, not only largest in our country, it is the largest age group in the entire history of humanity. Please remember. If you take entire history of humanity, the 10 years to 19 years is about 22 crores that lives in India now. If we miss this opportunity, then people are worried. We don't know where do we end. Whatever demographic dividend we are talking, they call it demography, nightmare, demography, catastrophe. Because we have people, there is no problem. That is considered. We are all learning English. That's why I am trying to speak in English so that you must realize that in how English is important to all of us who are in higher education sector. We can't afford to ignore you know, English language as a vehicle of communication because it is going to play a very crucial role in your careers. Then second idea I am talking about you now, which is also changed, you realize about 30, 40 years back, all district characters were concentrating on one agenda item. Do you know which is that agenda item? Family planning. When I was a child, there used to be huge holdings on family planning. That was the top priority for district characters 30 years back, 40 years back. Campaign, green campaign, planning, family planning. That was the slogan. I still remember as a child in school. That was a slogan. 
Now what we are saying, the idea is changed now. We are not, we are not working on family planning. We used to conduct camps and cut vasectomy, tubectomy, go on cutting people. That was a program of administration 30 years back, 40 years back. Now what we are saying, population is not a liability for our country. Now we are saying, this population which you needed as a liability, burden, it is an asset now. Because nobody, no other country has this advantage of having this much young population. So this young population is not a burden, but it is an asset. <coughs> That's how ideas keep changing and the changing uh, fates of nations. That's why we made a statement. One idea about English language, second idea is about the population. So this population is in our colleges now, in our universities now. And this generation is falling prey to the problem of nation security. It is also a problem of national security. That's why we want that all these young children, we should give them proper education by creating proper academic environment. <coughs> we have to change the curriculum. We have to change the teaching methodology. We don't want to see children only <coughs> filled with facts textbooks. No. This sort of education is not going to be any good to this generation. We have to promote creativity. We are now calling it as out of box thinking. We are supposed to promote in our universities not root memory, but you go to the But you go to the Buddhist forum, example, Katea. That is going to be waste. Our, we are coming out of colleges with degrees. I am a graduate, I am a postgraduate. But what, what is education? Whatever is left in your brain, once you come out with your degree, that is education. And what is it? You make your own assessment. You have completed graduation, you have completed postgraduation, coming out of university, then what is that that is left in our mind? What is left? If I ask questions about 5th class, 10th class, standard questions also, I am not able to answer. <coughs> that means, we have studied for the purpose of examination. I might have got distinction. In the graduation, I might have got distinction, I might have got gold medal. But after some time, what is left in my mind? That we define it as education. So true education level is what that is left in our mind after we come out of college, after we come out of university, what is that left? Let us make our own introspection and assessment, what is left in our mind? That is a that is going to be the true education. So now there is a paradigm shift in the education which is essential, otherwise we will not survive, we will not have future. Those who are undergraduates, graduates, doctorates, they don't have future if you follow the same teaching methods, same pedagogy, same curriculum, no. We have to think of, you know, increasing our creativity. We have to think of <coughs> new ways of thinking, something new. Our education system should arouse curiosity in the students. They should not kill the curiosity in the student's mind. Students should always ask, why? Not only why, why not? Students should always question, why? Not only why, why not? Then only these minds will grow. Unless these minds grow, they will not be able to have their you know, golden future and we are not going to have our golden telegraph. Let us be very, very clear about these things. Not like that. It is not delivering rice or something to the child. No. You are not delivering. You have to make the student learn something. 
The emphasis should be not on teaching. The emphasis should be on learning. How much we are made, able to make the child to learn. We have to create an environment where child is tempted to learn. When it will happen? When it will happen? You have to always curiosity in the mind of a child. Don't snub him. Student asks a question, what can you give the other for? He is snubbing. You are create, you are killing his instinct of asking and asking and asking. How scientists have created? You go to the history, the scientists who got Nobel Prizes in the history, they were not real scientists which we talk about in our universities. They don't have a laboratory, they don't have a degree. You think of one scientist, great scientist called Faraday. Sort of pharmaceutical chemistry students are there. Faraday. He studied up to only third class. When there was no electron, he has invented electricity. Was there any lab with him? Were there any computers? Nothing. It is only fire. There was only one thing in him that there is a fire. Yes, I should do something. I should think innovatively and do something. You think of one great person, we forget, one Mr. J.C. Bose. He lived in Calcutta. He went there, he studied BA. He went to some institution, studied some physics. Within one year, he set up the instrument. Now we are calling it as a you know, telephone, telegraph, something like that. The credit was taken by Marco Penny, who got the Nobel Award. But J.C. Bose could not get it. But in Calcutta city, he took only one year to catch up this setup. And he made live demonstration in the city of Calcutta those days. There was no laboratory with him. Our was creativity. I was to do something. One should be hungry. One should be thirsty of learning something and doing something. Unless our education system promotes these aspects, there is no future for our children. We have numbers. These numbers will be there. We come through top, you know, one sixth of the world population. This generation, next 30 years, who are is in this age group, are going to transform the world either in a positive manner or negative manner. The choice is ours. And that you are all fortunate. That you are in a university, you are in a college, you are able to teach students. People, the students do not attend the classes, there is a poor attendance. The teachers also do not attend the classes, there is a poor attendance. Why? Why we are failing to teach these children? Why we are failing to inculcate interest in the minds of these children and make them come to the class? Then Armour Karimu Sangan, Art Science and College, Armour. In the BPC Sangana Pudu, Makalayal Dho, there was one great lecturer called Ambarish. I don't know, but those who belong to Armour area, they might have heard him, Ambarish. He was a lecturer in his big circle. I have seen one lecturer like this. I am a BPC student, but uh, Art School, my friends, what are there? You put the Amber Instar class is Kunaro, they are attend class. In where nobody will miss. There will be zero absenteeism. Teacher should be like any teacher. We get all the students to come. Students themselves should come to the class, attend the lecture, and ask the questions. They should have interest. How interest they will have? We have to create interest in them. We have to create interest. We have to create urge in them to learn. So then only real learning will take place. I don't believe in teaching. I believe only in learning. Teacher's job is to facilitate the learning. That's all. You need not do anything. You need not give a big lecture, huge lecture and complete the syllabus. You should create interest in these students. 
students should you know study you should only guide them you should be like a mentor you should be like a role model the child should see yes my teacher is a role model so in the private school or college who will remember why don't we all become like that we should become good teacher good lecturer so that our children should feel that oh he was a teacher he was a lecturer and every one of us are capable of being this it is not that we are not capable no we are capable of being this and every our child there are brilliance in the rural areas we are not catching them yet their iq is more than 125 150 some of the children in the rural areas their iq level is 125 130 140 also but they are missing out they live in a slum they live in a tribal habitation they live in a shadow caste habitation which is isolated there is untouchability nobody bothers so nobody identifies their talent and their nurture it needs a nurturing of you know talents you have to spot the talent and nurture them they are big, they are capable of becoming our noble laureates i don't have any doubt that our children who are living in a rural area rural backward telangana in the noble communities no i am not telling they are all capable of becoming, because god has given same mind same brain to everybody for proper growth and development of this brain it is only some environment so your intelligence which is inborn which is unique to your personality plus environment the teacher the parent the circumstances they all develop that uh, individual into a person we should tell these things to the children they suffer from inferiority complex they feel that i belong to this community they feel that i cannot learn english they feel that i cannot learn mathematics no you have to break that wall you have to break that wall you have to break that obstacle in their minds in the childhood then only they can grow that is the teacher job you are all you know fortunate that you are into a teaching profession i feel jealous about all of you really i feel jealous jealous when i think of a teacher or a lecturer i don't have that advantage because you are the people you change the fate of you know, lives of our children nobody else more than that or less than that and this is the generation which stands at the crossroads and questioning all of us we are there we are young we are capable young population young dynamic population but you you tell me what should i do how should i develop my own knowledge my own communication skills so one is expansion that is taking place i told you exponential pace the higher education is going colleges universities are going students are enrolled two and a half crores of students are there in higher education but what is their employable skill if you ask the ceos see what sort of engineering college students who are coming out these days are unfit to do their job they are rejected by the companies that is the standard of education we have high qualifications but such a for low kind of job you see the recent recruitment of viagos most of you have seen many of your students have done graduation pg b tech you say any degree they what is viagos examination you are a qualified person but searching for a employment of that of a vr or video why we don't have standard there is a mismatch between the students who are coming out of their colleges with some capability and the requirement of industry business entrepreneurs in the world is different it is not matching this mismatch has to be this gap has to be Reduce. There is no other way. Our children have to become employable. Our children have to become excellent. That means the quality of you know their uh, education life has to improve. We have improved access and equity also. 
in the olden days only uh, OC students they used to get it HK history. Now we, have, we are taking everybody along. We are taking STs from rural areas, we are taking SEs, we are taking backward communities, we have created residential schools, social residential school, VC residential school, you name. Equity also by and large we have covered. The skills which are required for applying them, not the ఖాళీ <laughs> 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 People are in queue. And that's where entrepreneur comes. If you sell puja samanu for that period, you become an entrepreneur, that's all. And the opportunities. I am telling you the worst example of you know, opportunities in our life. Opportunities are there. We have to open our eyes and see and uh, encase that opportunity. That is called entrepreneurship. Chala one of the startups and a concept which is they are putting their own startups. They are employing. Who founded Google? Mark Zuckerberg. They would have a visa on order. Curriculum at all of them. So, they would have to do the admission set for these students. What is the examination system? Internal assessment. Everything counts. Not only building or road or... No. Not only infrastructure. They meant interacting with children also. Students would interact with them. I see so. Students support. డిస్ట్రిక్ట్ <laughs> I gave you open car when I was collector Karim Nagar. I have been able to do a lot of work in the world. I have been able to do a lot of work in the world. I have been able to do a lot of work in the world. I have been able to do a lot of work in the world. I have been able to do a lot of work in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. తెలంగాణ యూనివర్సిటీ అనే నామకరణ చేయడం ఈ యూనివర్సిటీకి నేను వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్గా మరి ఎంతకాలానికి తెలియదు వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ ఇన్ఛార్జ్గా ఇక్కడికి రావడం చాలా సంతోషదాయక విషయం తెలంగాణ యూనివర్సిటీకి సంబంధించిన క్యాంపస్ ఈరోజు నేను విజిట్ చేయడం జరిగింది ఏదైతే ఇక్కడ జరుగుతున్న కార్యక్రమాలు ఉన్నాయో వాటన్నిటినీ పరిశీలించడం జరిగింది ఇక్కడ ఫ్యాకల్టీ మెంబర్స్ the heads of the department, deans, atlaage principals, andar to, pari na avipran ni share ches koon jari indi, idhi automatically visit hi university ki. Kutta ga airport hai na university ka patti, chala samasya nikhada nalakonu nai. Udhana ga infrastructure sammadhi chhi, jya maulikri maya na sadupayal, chala university ki kondavar sindhi. ప్రభుత్వ స్థాయిలో తప్పకుండా ఏదైతే సమస్యలు ఈ తెలంగాణ యూనివర్సిటీని వేధిస్తూ ఉన్నాయో అది సరిపోయినంత హాస్టల్ బిల్డింగ్స్ లేక కానీ లేకపోతే కళాశాల భవనాలు లేక కానీ ఒక ఆడిటోరియం కూడా లేదు ఇక్కడ స్పోర్ట్స్ ఫెసిలిటీస్ కూడా సరిగ్గా లేవు కనీస వసతి కూడా బాయ్స్ హాస్టల్ లేదు చాలా ఎక్కువ సమస్యలతో ఈ తెలంగాణ యూనివర్సిటీ ఈరోజు ఉంది ఇక్కడ ఏదైతే వర్క్స్ జరుగుతూ ఉన్నాయో లైబ్రరీ బిల్డింగ్ కాంపౌండ్ వాళ్ళు వస్తూ ఉంది 
अट्ला इंका प्रतिपादन चाल अंश वीटनगरी पीडब्ल्यूडी की संबंधी इंजनी तो नैन आरव तेजी हईदराबाद सवेश जो पन तक समीक्षा एदे प्रतिपादन स्थाई में उन्यो वाट एस्टिमेट तैयार चेजी प्रभुत् वह पंप